challenge, I created several examples of repeat loops. This challenge will explore forever loops and repeat until loops, but first a quick repeat loop example to change the sprite size five times. I'll go to the Looks palette for size, scroll down, make the size variable visible. The cat's size is 100% right now. I want to change its size five times. I'll get change size while I'm here. Go to Control, Repeat, change the 10 to a 5. The change size loop is going to go very quickly, so I'll slow it down with a weight. I'll start it with the green flag, Events, Green flag. Now when the green flag is clicked, the size will be changed five times. Instead of changing by 10%, I'll change by 20% each time. When the program's finished, I want the cat back to its regular size, back to looks, set size to 100%. When the green flag's clicked, the loop changes the sprite size five times and restores the size when it's finished. I'll click on the green flag one time, two, three, Four, last time, finished. I'm finished with this example. I'll get rid of the blocks and I'll get size off the stage. Scroll down, uncheck size. Now I'm ready for my next example where I'll show an important behavior of the repeat loop. But first I'll start with a simple loop that displays the numbers one through five. First I'll need a couple variables. Data, make a variable. Make the variable num. I'll leave it for all sprites for this example. OK. Make another variable. Call it max for the largest value. OK. So I have num and max. Control. I want to repeat max times. Back to data. Max. I'll drop max in. I need to initialize it. Max should be 5. Num will have the changing values 1 through 5 that the cat will display. So I'll set num, change max to num. Start it at 1. Now I want to display the number. Go to looks, say. I want to say the number for only one second. Change the 2 to a 1. Back to data. Get num. Drop it in. Num is 1. Num's going to stay 1 in this loop unless I increment it. Get the change block. Change max to num. Now num will start as 1. Then each time through the loop, 5 times, it'll display the value and change num. And when it's finished, I'll have it say finished. Duplicate. Delete. Delete. And say finished. Program's ready to run. I'll click on the green flag. One, two, three, four. Last time. Finished. Notice when it's finished, num is six, not five. That's because after the loop repeats five times, the values change five times, starting from one, so it'll be six. The program's behaving correctly. Now the interesting question is if I change max inside the loop, will it change the number of times the repeat loop is run? I'll set max to 100 inside the loop. 100. Max starts as 5. Repeat 5. Then max is changed to 100. Will it repeat 100 times or will it stay at 5? I'll run it and you're hoping it stays at 5 or 100 will take a while. Green flag. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Finished. This shows the repeat block calculates the number of times to repeat and it can't be changed. The set doesn't change the number of times the repeat will be made. It's already been determined. I'll get ready for my next example and I'll remove the two variables from the stage. I want the cat to walk across the stage and stop when it hits the edge. Control. I don't know how many times the cat would move, so a repeat of a number isn't going to help. I need something more flexible. I'll use a repeat until. I want the loop to repeat until the cat is touching the edge. Sensing. Use the touching condition. Menu. Touching edge. Now when I click on the green flag, it'll repeat until the cat is touching the edge. I need the cat to move. I'll go to motion. Drop move inside the loop. I want it to move more. Move 25. 
I want to see each move. Control, wait, looks, and I want to add a message from the cat that says, I'm touching the edge. Now when I click on the green flag, the repeat loop will run until the cat's touching the edge. When the loop's finished, the cat will display that it's touching the edge. I'll run the program. Green flag. Cat's moving. 25 steps each time. Move and wait. Wait. Touching. It says I'm touching the edge. I want the cat to move back to the middle of the stage. Motion. Go to. Instead of 200, I'll change it to 0. I'll click on the block. Now the cat's back in the middle. I'll add this to the initialization so the cat's always starting at the center. I'm finished with this example. For my next example, I want the cat to display the numbers from 0 to 25, counting by fives. I'll remove the command blocks, move, and say, the touching, and the go-to. I want the cat to display 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. I'll use the repeat loop and my variables max and num again. I'll make them visible again. Back to data. Check. Check. I want to display the number. I'll use num. Change max to num. I want to display 0 through 25 by fives. So I want to repeat until num is greater than 25. Operators. Greater than. Drop it in. Data. I'll use max again. Until num is greater than max. I'll initialize max to 25. Max is the maximum value for num. I need to change num by 5 each time. Go to looks. Say command. Change the 2 to 1. Instead of hello, I only want to display num. Duplicate. Drop it in. Num starts at 0. Display 0. Display 0. Display 0. I need to change num. I need to add 5 to it each time. Back to data. Change. Change max to num. And I'll change 1 to 5. I'll add finished at the end. Copy. Get rid of these. And type finished. When this runs, num will be initialized to 0. Num will be 0. Add 5 will be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, yes, 25 greater than max is false, so it'll stay in the loop. Changes it to 30, 30 greater than 25 is true, so the repeat will finish. Then the cat will display finished. I'm ready to run now. Click on the green flag, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, finished. I'll change max to 50. Now I want to run the example again with the number 50. I'll click the green flag. 0, 5, 10. And the number keeps counting up. 50 greater than 50 is false, so it'll display 50. 50, and finished. This loop is working correctly. I'm finished with this simple example now. I'll get rid of all the commands and get the two variables off the stage. Uncheck. Uncheck. For my next example, I want the cat to follow the mouse pointer. Go to Control. I'll try the forever loop. Forever, which runs forever, can only be stopped by the stop sign or the stop command block. Forever isn't quite so forever. I want the cat to follow the mouse pointer. Go to Motion and get Point Towards. Drop it in the loop. Menu. Mouse pointer. Point towards mouse pointer changes the direction of the sprite to point towards the mouse. I'll click on the green flag, and now the cat's following the mouse. And getting a little dizzy. <laughs> I'll stop the program. And the cat stopped. I want the cat to follow the mouse pointer, so I'll add a move in the loop. Move. I'll start with something slow. I'll change 10 to 1. Notice I can't add any commands after the forever loop. There's no notch here, which is reasonable, since the loop runs forever. It's not going to come out of the loop, so it can't run any commands that would be after it. It can't get here. I'll run the program now. Green flag. 
and the cat's slowly following the mouse pointer. It follows the pointer as I move it around the cat. I'll stop it now. I light the cat back at the center, zero, zero, at the origin. I'll get go to, drop that in, change both of the numbers to zero, and I'll change the number of steps from one to five. It'll make the cat go a little faster. Click on the green flag. And the cat's definitely going faster after the mouse pointer. Go round and round. I'll stop it. And I'll run one more time with steps of 10 instead of 5. Click the green flag, and here comes the cat. And I'll stop it. I'll change this example to stop the cat when it's touching something that could be used as an exit from a game or from a level of a game. I'll save the commands inside. I'll get rid of forever and go back to control. <laughs> get rid of forever. That's not so easy. Repeat until. I'll drop the commands back inside. But repeat until what? I'll go to sensing. I want to use touching, but when it's touching a sprite. I don't have another sprite right now. I need to create another sprite. I'll go to New Sprite. Scroll down. I'll look for something I can use as an exit. I'll use the button. Double click. I'm going to use button as the exit. I'll click on the eye. And I'll change button 3 to exit. Having descriptive names helps make the program easier to understand. I finished changing it. Now I have an exit sprite. Looking at the scripts for exit sprite, I could have the exit up here, but it looks a little strange. First I'll stand it up. Go to motion, point in direction. Different directions will change the rotation of the button. Now it's at 90 degrees for right. I can try to left. I can try up. And I can try down. I like that. I'll slide it into the corner. So I always get it there. I'll move the go to to the top. Events. When the green flag's clicked. Now when the green flag's clicked on, the exit door will always be in the upper right and correctly oriented. Go back to the cat. For touching, I can choose the exit sprite now. When the green flag's clicked, the cat will go to the center of the stage. Then while the cat's not touching the exit sprite, it'll point towards the mouse pointer and move 10 steps. For this example, I'll slow it down to 5. I'll go to Looks and change Hello. Change Hello to Bye. Program's ready to run. Green flag. Cat starts in the middle. Chases around. And when it hits the exit, it says Bye. With the repeat loop, the cat kept moving kept moving until it was touching the exit, then the loop was finished and the cat says bye. If I were to run the program again right now, what would happen? The cat would go to the center at zero, zero and keep moving until it was touching the exit sprite. If I take the go to out of the handler and run the command like this, will the commands inside be run? The commands inside won't be run because the cat's already touching the exit. Repeat until touching exit is true, so the repeat won't be run, and the cat will say bye. To help see that a little better, I'll copy the say. I'll have the cat say meow. If I see the meow, then I know the repeat ran the blocks inside, so the cat was not touching the exit. I shouldn't see meow. I'll start with the green flag. I only see bye. If I put go to zero zero back in, I'll drop it in. Now the cat will move back to the center and won't be touching the exit sprite. So it will go inside loop and run the command starting with meow. I'll click on the green flag. Now I get meow. This is going to take a long time. I'll change 5 to 50. The cat's moving. And it'll stop when it's touching the exit sprite. It's stopped now. I'm finished with this example. I'll hide the exit sprite, click on Exit, Info, I'll uncheck Show, now the exit disappears. Go back to the sprites list and click on the cat sprite. 
I'll get rid of the commands. I want the cat pointing to the right as it usually starts. Go to Motion, Point in Direction, Menu, Pointing to the right. I'll run it. Now it's pointing to the right. I'll move it to the bottom of the stage. And I'll initialize with the command so the cat's always pointing to the right. For the last example, I want the cat going back and forth across the stage and bouncing whenever it hits the edge of the stage. I'll use a forever loop. Control, forever. Inside the loop, I want the cat running across the stage. Motion, move. And I'll change 10 to 50. So the cat won't go too quickly across the stage, I'll add a weight. I'll make the weight a little bit shorter. Instead of one second, I'll make it two tenths of a second. Every five times through the loop, it'll take a second. I want the cat to bounce when it hits the edge of the stage. I'll go to Motion. If on edge, bounce. Before I start, I want to save the cat's location. The go to command has its location. I'll add that in. Now the cat will always start there. I'm ready to run. I'll click on the green flag. And it's bouncing, but I don't want that. I'll stop it. I can change the style of how the cat bounces off the edge of the stage. There are three styles to choose from. Left, right, don't rotate, and all around. I want to use left, right. I'll click on it now. Now the cat's standing up. When I run the program, the cat bounces left and right now. I'll stop it. Remember there's help for all the block commands, including set rotation. It gives a description of left, right, all around, and don't rotate. I'll close it and run it again. While it's running, I'll try the other orientations. Don't rotate. Run it. Now the cat doesn't rotate. It looks kind of like moonwalking. Try all around. Run it. Now the cat bounces all around. I'll go back to left, right. Run it. And I'll stop the program. I always want the cat to bounce in this style, so I'll add it to the initialization. When a cat runs, it looks more like sliding than running. The cat has a couple costumes. I can use Next Costume to make the cat look like it's running across the stage. I'll go back to Scripts, Looks, Next Costume. Drop it in. I'll run it once more. Now it looks like the cat's running across the stage and bouncing back and forth. I'll stop it. It'd be more interesting if the cat were chasing something. I'll get another sprite. New sprite. Scroll down. How about a parrot? Move it over a little bit. The parrot can use all the commands from the cat script. I'll go to the cat. I'll drag the cat's commands and drop them for the parrot. The cat's commands are returned. Go to the parrot sprite. The parrot has its copy of the commands. I'll change the go to. Motion. I want the parrot's location. I'll get rid of the cat's go to. Get it back together. Reattach it. Program's ready to run now. Click on the green flag. They're going. But the cat's falling behind a little bit. I'll stop it <laughs> with the cat hiding behind the wing. <laughs> I'll go to the cat sprite. I'll change 50 steps to 60 steps. I'll see if that's better. I'll click on the green flag. And the cat's chasing the parrot now. It's running right along with it. I'll stop it. The cat looks like it's running. Why does the parrot look like it's flying? I'll go to Costumes for the parrot. The parrot has two costumes, the wings up and the wings down. To make this look a little more interesting, I'll add a backdrop. New backdrop. Scroll down. Hayfield. That looks interesting. Now they're in the hayfield. Back to scripts. Where'd the scripts go? The sprites aren't selected. The backdrop's selected. In Scratch, backdrops are objects and they can have scripts too. But it's pretty limited on the commands that are available. There are no motion commands, which makes sense for a stage, since the stage doesn't move. I'll work with backdrop objects in future challenges. For now, back to the cat and the parrot. Click on the cat. There's the cat script. 
And there's the parrot script. Back to the cat. Now the program's ready to run. Click on the green flag, and the cat's chasing the parrot across the hayfield. This challenge's examples use repeat, repeat until, and forever loops. I encourage you to change the examples and get comfortable with loops. Change the loops to do new things. Try making the cat change its color effect while it's running across the stage. Or add another exit sprite to that earlier example. Or for a hard challenge, instead of simply increasing the cat size by 20s in the first example, have the cat size repeatedly increase to 200 by 20s, then decrease back to 100 by 10s. You can use multiple loops to do this. You can use ifs and variables. Try some different approaches. See what works well and what doesn't. But above all, have fun with the examples. 